Hello and welcome everyone back. Today we've got yet another ATX mainboard that obviously isn't working right now. Uh, today we have a B550M DS3H. This is an AM4 board. This came to me for starting but not booting. The diagnosis of this board was quite simple, I gotta say, because it had a very obvious sh short circuit and was missing a voltage. As you can see, there are three phases right here. And you can see that one of those controllers is missing. That controller is a buck converter that is creating VPP voltage, it's called. VPP is one of the voltages that is requ required for DDR to work. There's also DDR 1.2 volts that is located somewhere here. And there are some other voltages that also um, go onto the slot, like VTT, for example, I think it is. And yeah, so our non-working phase was this one right there. And let me go to the microscope. So what now? We see actually our missing phase. Um, as you can see, BIOS battery right there. And on this side our DDR slots. And you have one phase right there, the second one down there, and a third one. So you have multiple controllers. There are, these are uh, buck converters. I think this is a different chip than these two would be, and these two would be identical. And this is VPP. This is generating 2.5 volts that is going to the DDR slot. It was a really obvious short circuit that the buck converter that was standing here, so this chip, was dead here. It was just shorted to ground, so nothing special there. I unsoldered it, and the video is not about this. This video is about something a little bit different. Let's say you have this board, and you want to find out, is this my only problem? But you can't test it right now because you don't have this chip on hand. This chip takes three to four weeks to arrive if you order it from China. And then you don't even know if it's a working one or not. But you really want to check if this board has everything else that it needs and boots up. In this state right now, the, bo the board does not boot up. And we can't test it. But there's something else you can do. As you might have spotted before, Today we're going to use our great power supply right here, in the bottom right corner of your screen. That is already set to 2.5 volts. Some of you may already know what we're going to do. But let me set this up because as right now we don't have a processor in here, we don't have RAM in here. And I'm going to set this up and get you back in a minute. Right now we are set up. We have a processor in there, we have a cooler in there. We have power connected there and here. We have a GPU that is connected to the UVI to the uh, TV. And we have a postcard here in our TPM um, slot. So now what we're going to do is we have this nifty, uh, nifty little power button here. And we're going to see what happens. It starts up. As you can see, the fan is spinning. Also, the fan of the GPU is also spinning, but you can't see. And we get stuck on, I think that's B0. And the bot is not going to do anything right now. We're not posting, we don't have a picture, and the bot is stuck. Why is it stuck? Because we're missing our voltage for DDR, our VPP. And what we're now going to do is we're going to use the magic of our power supply to make this bot work again. We now have 2.5 volts hooked up to this prop and hooked up to the ground that is at the top here. You can't see it because uh, this clamp is clamped to the DVI of the uh, output of the main board. We just need a ground for this thing, for this prop. And then both of those are connected here. So you need to watch the current, that's the lower one. When we are going to supply the voltage to our main board through our power supply with this probe, going to inject it at the inductor, and you're going to see the current jump. And also, you're probably going to see some postcodes here, and maybe even some LEDs on this test card right here. So, let's try it. 
I'm going to touch our prop right here and we're going to turn it on and as you can see we are posting so I have postcodes running through here it's quite hard to hold a prop uh, quite on the right place but we, we saw B2 there we went for another round of posting And I have picture. Can't show you right now because I only have two hands. But I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to set this up once again, but you can so you can see the screen. One moment. So right now you can see in the bottom right my test screen or test TV. That's what is hooked up to this graphics card. And now we're going to do the whole thing again. So we're taking our probe, putting our probe onto VPP turning the board via the button on and now we're going to wait you see the post codes and we got picture obviously we have a BIOS error because this thing has been set reset multiple times now it's important don't go away with your probe if you want to turn this off turn it off via the button just like the normal way you would do so you turn off the button it turns off and then you take off the probe. I wouldn't recommend taking off the probe because the whole thing will freeze because all of a sudden it's missing a voltage. Rather go to the planned and correct way and turn it off by the button. So I have actually done stress test tests like this where I was using the two two and a half volts of my power supply to supply VPP and actually run the board, but I wouldn't recommend it. This it's just a last resort thing or something if you're really impatient to be honest because this is not a proper fix no way you need this IC that goes here that belongs to there make it right because like this you can't sell anything to a customer or you can't call it fixed yet but you have pr proved that everything else in this board everything else works or like it boots we get those that far. I already tested that this box board fully works otherwise that you only only VPP is missing. So I wouldn't recommend this method for anyone because if you don't know what voltage you're supplying it's bad and also the thing is you don't know how stable things will be. Third you can slip with your probe. If you slip like me with your probe you have two and a half watts and put it into something else like the 1.05 volts of the PCH, you're going to kill the PCH with those two volts and so on and so forth. I wouldn't recommend this, but I have done this. If you know what you're doing, you can use this method. I've done this, for example, with um, the five volts of a GPU that was missing, but I'm pretty sure you can't use, like, ex for example, one volt to supply to the CPU. I haven't tried it, but I don't think you would be able to. And this might not always work because there's other things that this controller generates. This controller generates a needed power good signal. This might not work because even then, if you supply the power, the power good signal might still be missing. That would generate a different voltage on the board. So this might work. But it doesn't have to. But I really wanted to show this because this fix was very fast and wasn't really something to show. But this method of testing the board afterwards was uh, quite so uh, was quite something interesting that I wanted to show you. But keep in mind, you can damage things with this. Only do this if you actually know what you're doing. I actually have the missing IC on hand. And I'm going to solder it. I'm going to show you the, the IC. Now you can see this is our IC that needs to be soldered there. The bottom one is, as far as I know, the same chip, but just with different markings. I'm going to show you also the board view that I have for this board, on which you can actually find out the part number, which is how I found out. This is our missing face, as you can see. It's um, VPP memory. And coming out from this controller, 
This controller is an RT8068AZQW. And this, as you can see, is the same one here, just like there. And this is this is already a different one, yeah. But these two are the same controllers, and this is the phase that we have injected our voltage to make the board run again. And this is the controller I'm now going to solder back onto the board. And we're going to see if it all works just fine then, which I think it will. A quick voiceover for what you're seeing right now, how I soldered the chip. In the first step, you're going to see how I add leaded solder to the mix so that the alloy has a lower melting temperature, so it's easier to wick off, just like you can see here. You need to add flux. This one is actually drowning in flux right now. Then I'm adding back leaded solder to the mix so that the chip has something to contact to and it has a lower uh, melting temperature and it's easier to solder the chip on because there's a plastic connector right next to it that I don't want to flow or to burn. So leaded solder is it going to make that everything that is leaded solder will be soldered a lot quicker because the melting temperature is a lot lower than with non leaded solder. Then we added some flux again. Now you can see me putting the chip back onto there. Make sure the orientation is right. I orientated on the board view and the chip that is below it that the dot, dot has uh, to be in the top right corner. Now you see me flipping the board so it's easier for me to solder it. My air station is currently set up to 10% airflow and to, I think it was probably around 380 degrees. Now you can see me fiddle with the chip. I actually made a mistake with adding a little bit too much solder onto the ground plane, which made it very hard to position the chip. And now you can see that also a lot of solder squeezed out onto the side that I now removed with my tweezers. And we are reflowing the chip, making sure it contacts all of the contacts on the board and repositioning it by giving it a quick nudge. Now that our chip is soldered, we're quickly going to clean up the board of all the residential flux and burn flux that is on there. And now there's some quick measurements. I only checked all the contacts against ground, so we don't have any so short circuits. I went onto the input, the output, and all the pins in between. And that's basically already our chip soldered. And we are able to jump to the next part of the video after these last few checks have been done. As you can see, it's quite hard to get onto some of those contacts, getting my hand quite in the way right here and <laughs> needing to reposition a couple of times. But at the end, all of the contacts had good resistance to ground, none of them were shorted. So, you now saw, hopefully, some parts of how that chip was soldered using hot air. Uh, I don't really like soldering on camera. It's quite hard because I need to see you first in the first place and it's not that easy to make it visible for everyone so I didn't even explain it this time I just fast forwarded it probably and yeah I uh, after I saw that I checked the connections for shorts to ground and as you can saw with the probes and everything was good now we have a power supply set up it is connected you can see our postcodes again. You can see in the bottom right, if I, yeah, somewhere there, you should see now our screen. We're going to hit our button. We're gonna let it through, and you can already see the postcodes going way further than we had before. And this time, no probes, nothing attached to here, just the the chip that uh, that belongs to there. And as you can already see. We have picture. So that means the spot is fixed. The chip was a real chip from China and is working. I'm very glad for that. 
and yeah yet another fixed board and hopefully you learned something today something how you can test or replace even some power onto the board some missing rails but as i said before be cautious with it and be careful you might kill something and i'm not responsible for that <laughs> so have a good one everyone bye